The Epoch 168. Today the biggest news comes from the Kherson region. Here, due to the partial destruction of the Kohovka hydroelectric power plant, the water has wiped out dozens of settlements and islands and caused a huge ecological and humanitarian problem. In this video, I will tell you how the dam was destroyed, how it affects the nuclear power plant and how it affects the Ukrainian counteroffensive operation. First of all, we need to understand the scale of the destruction. The areas that took the hardest hit are located in close proximity to the dam. In Novokakhovka, the water levels increased by 5 meters and completely flooded the town. Some videos showed how the current carried whole houses down the stream. The walls of other buildings often collapsed under pressure, which resulted in the total demolition of the houses. The islands in front of the town have almost completely disappeared. When it comes to other settlements down the stream, the level of destruction turned out to be even higher. Because of their location, the settlements on the eastern side of the river were hit by the wave. By noon, 13 settlements appeared underwater, and it is expected that up to 40 settlements will appear underwater in total, because the hole in the dam gradually becomes bigger, sending more and more water down the stream. Apart from the settlements, hundreds of cemeteries, landfills and also burial grounds for infected cattle were flooded as well, which means that there is an extremely high risk of contamination of the water with infectious and fatal diseases. On top of that, the flood damaged the oil refinery in Kazatske, and some sources reported that hundreds of tons of oil spilled into the river. The only good news comes from the nuclear power plant. The engineers protected the nuclear power plant against such accidents. The power plant has two separate water pools operating in a closed circuit. The only times when the power plant takes the water from the reservoir is when the water level in the pool slightly drops due to evaporation. So even if the dam down the stream completely disappears, the water can still be pumped via pipes. But refilling is a very rare event. And given that right now the power plant only works at a 33% capacity and only uses 2 out of 6 blocks, there will be no shortages of water. At first, Russian state media reported that Ukrainians intensely shelled the dam and damaged the floodgates, resulting in uncontrolled water release. Ukrainian analysts responded to these claims by pointing out that Ukrainians could not even destroy the Antonievsky bridge with HIMARS by shelling it for two months. The dam is an extremely powerful structure that can only be damaged by planting tons of explosives. The Russian Ministry of Defense claimed that this is exactly what Ukrainians did. Defense Minister Shoigu reported that Russian forces completely defeated the Ukrainian counteroffensive in the Zaporizhia region. Ukrainians decided to compensate for the losses by redeploying everyone from the Kherson region. And because Ukrainians were afraid that Russians would take advantage of the empty front line and again capture Kherson, Ukrainians blew up the dam. The Ukrainian side responded by pointing out that the hole in the dam is located in the middle. And since Russians had destroyed the bridge on the Ukrainian side, only Russians had access to the middle section of the dam, and only Russians could transport tons of explosives. Ukrainian officials claimed that Russian forces decided to blow up the dam because Ukrainians had gradually established control over all islands and were ready to open a second southern front and conduct an amphibious operation. In fear that they would not be able to cope with the Ukrainian offensive in Zaporizhia and Kherson simultaneously, Russians blew up the dam and wiped out all Ukrainian positions on the islands. Interestingly, some Ukrainian sources pointed out that the same occupation officials that blamed Ukraine at first pretended that there are no explosions. The news about the explosion started appearing at 2 a.m. At 3 a.m., the occupation mayor of Novokakhovka reported that the news about the explosion is fake and that he's in the town and confirms that the night has been quiet. 50 minutes later, he said that Ukrainians were shelling the dam all night and damaged the floodgates. The analysts concluded that Russians tried to make a relatively small hole in the dam to flood only Ukrainians on the islands. Close to 4 am, they understood that they screwed up because the power of the water gradually amplified the destruction and the top part of the dam started to fall apart. As a result, the Ukrainian counteroffensive from the Kherson direction is temporarily cancelled. The river is 4 to 5 kilometers wide, so Ukrainians will be spotted and destroyed before even getting close to the other side of the river. Right now Ukrainians are conducting an evacuation of their troops and ammunition that they ship to the islands. Interestingly, Russians are doing the same. 
Because the flood turned out to be much bigger than expected, a lot of Russian positions were gradually cut off from the mainland and turned into shrinking islands. In the morning, many Russian social media channels started warning all Russian soldiers that they only had two hours to leave, not three days. This means that Russian forces were preliminarily informed to abandon their positions, however, because timing turned out to be off, not all Russian soldiers could be saved on time and many of them were wiped out by the current. Because the flood turned out to be much more severe, in the long run, Russians may even end up inflicting more damage to themselves. Some Ukrainian analysts reported that many parts of the first line of Russian defense have already appeared underwater. Most of the ammunition and equipment will not be saved, the trenches will turn into pools, and the fortifications along the bank will be wiped out. The water is expected to recede in around two weeks, and it is unlikely that Russians can resupply the whole Kherson group. Simultaneously, as the water level upstream is rapidly dropping, the width of the river in this region can shrink to the point where Ukrainians will unlock a new direction for an amphibious attack and will be able to pick the place on a 250km front instead of just 70. Such an attack will be even more destructive to the Russian plans as they will not be able to deploy enough troops to police the whole eastern bank while simultaneously defending against the counteroffensive in Zaporizhia. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.